And now for today's Bible question. Today we've been learning about the resurrection of Jesus Christ. This doctrine is the foundation of the Christian faith and an historical fact. Someone might ask the question, why do the details of Jesus' resurrection seem to vary from one gospel account to the other? Matthew has told us some of the details about the events of the resurrection, but we need to read all the gospel accounts to get a fuller understanding of all the details of that morning. If we were to read the other gospel accounts, it might even seem that they contradict each other in some points, because the details seem to be varied. Care must be taken to piece together each gospel record until the details become clear and every detail reconciled. The main facts are clear and attested by all writers that Jesus rose from the dead, that the stone was rolled away, that angels appeared and talked with the women, and that Jesus appeared to his disciples. The following is a brief summary which suggests how the events of that morning occurred. The actual historical events may vary from this view to some degree, but if we imagine it happening this way, then we can account for the various details given to us by each writer. Number one, early while it was still dark, women came to the tomb with spices to embalm his body. Two, at the tomb, the women noticed the stone rolled away. Three, Mary Magdalene sees the disturbed grave, rushes back to tell the disciples while the other women stay behind. Number four, the women now enter the tomb and find two angels who report that Jesus is risen. Five, these women run back to Jerusalem also to report to the disciples that Jesus had risen. Six, meanwhile, Mary Magdalene has already reported to the disciples that Jesus' tomb is empty. Seven, then Peter and John run to the tomb with Mary following them, but do not meet the other women. Eight, Peter and John enter the tomb and find the tomb empty and grave clothes, then head back into the city. Nine, while Peter and John leave, Mary stoops to look inside the tomb while weeping and sees the angels. 10. After the angels ask Mary why she is weeping, she turns and sees Jesus. 11. Jesus sends Mary back to his disciples to speak to them about his ascension back to heaven. 12. Mary now returns to the city again, this time to report that she had seen Jesus. 13. The other women now return to the tomb to further investigate, and Jesus meets with them also. If we accept this view of the events of the morning of the resurrection, we can account for each detail given by the four gospel writers. It would appear in the excitement, unbelief, and confusion of that early morning, and the reports that were given, that it would be difficult for each writer to recount each detail exactly. The writers were not attempting to tell us the precise movement of each and every person that visited the tomb, but convey the larger truth as seen through particular ones who reported what they had seen. The larger truth is the testimony that Jesus rose from the grave and was seen by his disciples. The Bible records for us several post-resurrection appearances of Jesus to his disciples, each further confirming the wonderful news that Jesus was raised back to life. The hope of the gospel is bound up in this very fact, for if Jesus is not risen, our hope is in vain. To be a true believer and to have salvation requires that we believe in this essential doctrine of the Christian faith, namely the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. Yes, Jesus is risen indeed, and the historical evidence, along with the spiritual results, are enough to convince anyone to place their confidence in Jesus as Lord and Savior. The Bible says, 
that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Romans chapter 10 verse 9.